Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Tuesday, May 7th, and we are here trying to help you make better financial decisions. We is me, Jill Schlesinger, CBS News business analyst and certified financial planner. And he is Mark Talercio, also a certified financial planner and an executive producer extraordinaire. Hello, Mark. Hello, Jill. Happy, uh, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday is right, and it's May, and you know, I know, I'm, I'm all, like, I was so happy to be done with April, it's freaking rainy. Uh, you know, I happened to, just out of curiosity, uh, look up the amount of rain that fell, because it felt like it was raining the entire month of April in New York, and it was actually heavier than I than usual, than historic norms. So, I'm sure I'll be complaining about that when we're looking for water in the summertime. How's your uh, garden doing, Mark? Are you, are you planting away? You This is your whole dream. You, oh, you yeah. Moved, you moved simply to get a garden oh yeah i was up there uh for five hours on sunday morning i planted eight big evergreen trees to uh provide a bit of privacy from the buildings across the way i have six what do you mean you planted like you got these huge things got delivered and you did that no 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 no. they didn't get delivered joe i went and got them (laughs) Wait a minute. What kind of knucklehead are you? Uh, wait a second. You're telling me you got these big trees and you you didn't have someone help you do this? I, well, they're, they're not huge. They're not full grown. They're still in the baby stage, but they're good sized trees. The trees are not the problem. The trees are actually very light to carry. The problem yeah. was getting, you know, 20 some odd bags of soil up several flights of stairs. I thought I was going to die for real. It was rough. I cannot believe you, you're really, you're a donkey. You really are. Yeah, you this is why you have money, that you can pay people to do stuff. Well, I don't have that much money. but uh, You have enough money to pay someone to do that. <laughs> so, so I planted all those. Then I got uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about 16 containers up there with various vegetables. Oh, my God. Uh, so, it's yeah, it's going to be great. All right. This is what I did. I called my guy. I said, hey, Jim, when are we planting the pots? I got to get some new pots. Can you pick up some new pots for me, Jim? And I get my bill and I pay Jim. That's how it works in my household. There's no, yeah, and we get to like second guess him like crazy. Oh, why didn't that grow? You know, that's that's how I roll. Let me, um, there is, there's there's no reason to do, to do this yourself. That's a very hard thing to do, that manual labor. Here, I can do this and we can do this in real time. Hold on. Okay. Let me, let me see. Are you, are you texting me something? Yeah, let me give you this picture. Let's give you a sense. And when you see the picture, all those planters. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was all me as well. Okay. Hold on a second. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, those are nice planters. They're very attractive. Are those those are concrete or are those plastic? No, no, those are those are plastic. Oh, they're plastic. Jackie won't let me do plastic. Forget it. So they're they're uh, made from it's all recycled. I okay. that Amanda found them. Okay, of course she did. Um this is what I did. I sent this uh let me show you this. I sent these like gray those are gray heavy planters. Like terracotta. Those are terracotta, but I don't want the terracotta color. Yeah, I want the yeah. whitish, sandy color. Anyway, uh, this is uh, gardening with Jill and Mark. That's right. <laughs> that, is, that is my happy place for real. I just oh, go well, out that's and, nice. I just go up there and I sit there, and I, I mean, I am so content up there. Now we're just well, this, waiting. We're just waiting on some furniture to arrive, so I can you know take my coffee out there every morning. And and uh, what about the grill? You have a grill? Yeah, we're allowed to have a grill legally. We're allowed because there's a water source. I'm just, I don't know if it's going to happen this summer, but maybe. Why? Why not? Why wait? Go get that Weber. Fire that up. It's the best. <laughs> You'll love that. You're not Let the... me spend some money for you. Yes, yes. Thank you. I got it. I think I might have to get you a housewarming present. I'm going to send you a gift certificate. Where did you get all this crap anyway? Plants? I went to I went to a garden center here in Brooklyn, Home Depot, Lowe's, all over the place. Oh, my God. You are insane. I'll tell you something. You need a guy or a gal to do some stuff for you. That's what I can say. All right. We are your guy and gal to do your financial stuff for you. Today, we are talking to Ed, who's on the line from Florida. Ed, are you a gardener in Florida? No, I'm not. <laughs> are you laughing at this? Do you like that? You Are you amused by this conversation? Yeah. It's pretty interesting to hear how some other people go about it, but I'm a lot more like you, Joe. I'd pay a guy. I mean, you need a guy, you need a gal. Yeah. That's what I would say. I think, but Mark is not like that. He is a hands-on kind of person for sure. Ed, what brings you to us? What can we do for you? Um, well, first of all, thank you for taking my call. It's great talking to you. I turned 51 back in February, and I started taking this whole financial thing a lot more seriously and looking into how much longer do I have to work, how much longer does my wife have to work, and just really doing a financial checkup and trying to get some insight on how we should proceed and where we're at. 
Okay, that sounds good. Now, also from your, I saw your email and you just found us about a month ago. Are you binging us now? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you good. Then I'm also binging Ed Slot because of you. So I'm on, a, yes. I'm all over the place. Yeah. Isn't he great? He's terrific. I love him. I love him so much. Okay, but I love you right now. So, Ed, what's going on? Are you guys both working? Yes, we both work. Uh, combined, we make about 250 She's My wife's 46. I'm 51. We mm-hmm. have two kids. My daughter's about to be 14, and my son, I'm sorry, 16, and my son's <gasps> about to be 13. 13 and 16. Yeah. And are they in public school or private school? It's public charter schools, yeah. Are these kids college bound? Yes. Are you going to use that? Like, isn't there like a very cool plan at Florida where it's like you have a certain GPA, you can get into a like a good state school? Yeah, they call that the bright futures. Um, yeah. It is certainly something we're hoping for, but I'm also an employee of a university down here. And oh. so as long as I stay there, my kids, I get tuition remission for them. But do, what if the kids don't get into that school? Well, that, that where you work. I mean, yeah. you get you get tuition, but like they have to get in, don't they? Well, yes, of course they still have to get admitted. And uh, my backup, because I always plan and I always believe in having Plan B and Plan C for that matter. Yeah, I you do and have me both. The Florida prepaid uh, for both of them. Oh, how does that work? Give me the details on. Yeah, that. so basically, you are able to when they're born lock in the rates of college tuition today. Uh, oh. And you pay into that monthly, and then they go to any state school. It covers the tuition portion of the plan. The plan covers the tuition of any state school in Florida. They can actually use it out of state as well. How much money are, are, is in the prepaid plan? That's a good question. Uh, we paid it lump sum. I think each one ended up being close to about 25000 30000 um, so and that would be enough, do you think, to float their future or not necessarily? Well, at a state school, for sure, uh, because mm-hmm. it would, that's... They're it, not going out of state. This is it. <laughs> this is the deal. They either get their butts in gear and can actually get into the school where your bosses will pay the, the free ride, or they're going to state school. Next. Okay, right. let's yeah. keep going on with well, you Well, plan guys. C is I do have a 529 for them as well for each of them, so... How much? Uh, there's about 12000 in each one of those right now. You guys are both working. You make two hundred fifty grand together. Do you have retirement savings? Yes, I have a four hundred three b that has close to six hundred, and my wife has a four hundred one k that has about five fifty. That's great. You guys are cranking. Do either of you have pension possibilities or not? No pensions. Okay, keep going. So last year, my employer finally offered the Roth four hundred three b option. Mm-hmm. So I split my contribution. I, I'm now giving 13% of my contribution towards that and 10% towards traditional. My wife's Got at, it. she's doing 6% towards traditional with a 4% match. Okay. Is there any reason, is this just like you had to kind of um, acclimate yourself to the idea of not getting the full tax deduction. In other words, I mean, you got a ton of money in pre-tax right now, which yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and it's only going to get worse. So are you are you inclined to do all Roth or not? Well, that was actually one of my questions for you. Um, <laughs> I guess, like you said, it is a warming up period because I really wasn't sure how what my check was going to look like and what the tax yeah. were going to be. Now that I I've mean, done it for a I year, think- I can see myself going that direction, yes. I think it's a yes. Um, I know Mark's going to say yes. Tell us a little bit more about other stuff that's going on. Yeah. For example, any other, um, any other like IRA accounts, anything old floating around on the retirement yes, side? Yes, um, I have a, I have two rollover. Well, they're called they're called rollover IRAs, but they have yes. annuities with equitable. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Okay, keep going. How much is in those? So let, let me ask you a question, though, because mm. so I have, you know, these annuity statements. One of them says there's a cash value. The other then I have it's a called a guaranteed minimum income benefit. Yeah. So which what's the cash do you value? Want? That's the look. Give me the lower one. The lower number on the first one is ten thousand six thirty seven. Yeah. And then on the second one, the lower number is thirty three thousand three uh, thirty four thousand three thirty five. Just so I'm clear. It is labeled at the top of that statement. It says IRA rollover, right? Yes, it does. Perfect. Okay. And then there's Good. one more labeled traditional IRA mm. that has about 92000 in it. Oh, criminy. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
who sold these to you? Equitable. Someone is this like an old plan? Like it was an old equitable plan. You left the former employer, and now they just they just said, "Oh, buy it from us." And well, you can keep. Not exactly. It was a family friend who sold me the first two, the smaller amount ones. One mm-hmm. that one of them is from two thousand seven. The other one's from two thousand eight. Okay. And then the larger traditional one was from a previous employer that I had. It's called FRS, the Florida Retirement System. Uh-huh. And then I rolled that money over into this traditional IRA back in 2018. Okay. I, I You know I want to get rid of these right away. <laughs> like I am all over this. Like get me out of this. But I'm inclined, what I'm hopeful that you can do is you talk to your people at your current employer and you say, I have two rollover IRAs and a traditional IRA, which actually was the source of it was a retirement plan. Can I directly move the cash value of all three of these into my current 403B? That is what my hope would be. That's my hope. If it's not, it's not. I get it. Okay. But I just want to say that's what I'm hoping that we can accomplish. What about your wife? Does she have any old? Because I want I will go back to this stuff in a second. But does your wife have any old retirement? No, stuff? hers is mostly the what the four hundred one k. That's it. Good. And what about non retirement? Non retirement, um, we have about a hundred and twenty. I put it in a CD right now. One hundred twenty thousand is our emergency fund. Great. And then individual, you know, savings, checkings, accounts probably mm-hmm. add up to twenty five, thirty grand. House. Yeah, condo in Florida. Yeah, how much we're is it? Close worth? to about four hundred. We owe probably thirty grand left. That's it. Yeah, we're close, dude. Yeah. Um, what's the interest rate on that? Two point five. Oh my god, how is it so? Did you pay this off early? Did you pay off a two and a half percent note early? Uh, we well, <laughs> it wasn't always two and a half. We actually refinanced twice to get it down to that number, and then we did throw a big chunk of money at it about a year ago. Oh my God. Wait, wait. Uh, well, what was the big chunk? How much? Uh, I think it was probably about twenty, twenty five thousand. All right. Uh, that's not bad. That you didn't. All right. I thought you were going to say like 200 grand. Oh, no, no. Like, I want that back. No, I wish. Okay. <laughs> Ed, how much longer are we going to work? What's the, what's your gate? What's your hope? Does, I mean, you got a young kid. So you got a 13 year old. So are you going to work till this kid gets through college? Like, 10 more years? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about, 10. I'd okay, work 10 more years. Too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You spend a lot of money or not? What do you guys do? Um, what are you doing down there in Florida? Playing pickleball and golf and whatever else you do in Florida? Catching catching dolphins? Yeah, pickleball, <laughs> yes. Uh, golf, no. But uh, okay. I would estimate our monthly expenses probably in the range of about five to $6,000 a month. The association dues here are kind of beefy. That, you're not spending a lot. You're making 250 grand. Are you saving more money than the amount you're putting in your retirement account? I mean, you do have a chunk of money, that 120 grand in the CD, but like, are you saving money every month or is that all going into various, after you do retirement and you do college stuff, is there any money left over? Yeah, I guess some of it just sort of accumulates in the checking savings account type thing. And then I usually end up putting that and moving it over to my high yield savings and kind of just keep building that nest egg of that emergency fund. That's how it got. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Um, Now, last question for you. Estate documents, life insurance. What do you got? Estate documents are all good. I checked up on those. And then life insurance, we get, we each get the standard, I guess you could say, one time our annual salary from our employer. Yes. And then we each also have have a variable life insurance policy. So does she. Um, Oh boy, this must be your family friend again. Yes, you had you know. (laughs) But, but, but the second one, because I actually had two, I closed one. (laughs) (laughs) The second one, I'm actually a little bit more okay with, I guess you could say. Well, I'll I'll tell you if you should be okay with it. How much is the death benefit? Uh, 250,000. It has a long-term care rider. How much money are you putting into this thing? A uh, hundred bucks a month. And, and my wife's, wife's got um, hers is like two, about 250000 also. And she's putting yeah. right now, she's only putting in like 50 bucks a month. But they wanted to add a long-term care rider to hers too. which would Don't push, add anything just yet. Okay. Which relax. would push it to about 100 a month if we go through a long-term Even care so. rider. 
you're not accumulating any value. You might have a long-term care rider, but you're not accumulating any value. Blow out of that long-term care rider in five seconds because you're not putting enough money in to get the full benefit of why universal life can, and I don't say does, but can work. And you're both maxing out your retirement account. So you are you doing the catch up contribution, the extra seventy five hundred? I'm doing a total right now. Of, well, I'm doing a total of twenty three percent. I do ten percent traditional, thirteen percent Roth as of now. Uh, what? Wait, what's your salary? I'm sorry. One oh six. I'll give you the. Okay, so you're putting in twenty three grand, but you're not putting in the extra seventy five hundred that you could be putting in because you're over the age of fifty. Correct. Okay, got it. So I think you got to go all Roth. That's number one. You guys are going to work for 10 years, but you may work for 15 more years because, you know, listen, you guys are going to need health insurance. So you're going to retire and you're going to be, your wife's going to be 56, 10 more years. That is young. That is 10 years of, nine years of of health insurance for her because you're not getting free health insurance from your employer. You don't work for a state, right? No. So I want you to just like take a deep breath before we say like, yeah, we're done in 10 years. You may be done with a heavy lift, but someone has to get insurance or your expenses are going up because you'll be paying for insurance for until you're each 65 years old. Right? Yes. I know you hate that, right? Yes. Sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you hate your job? No. All right. So let's not get all downbeat. 61 is very young. It's very close to that age, my friends. (laughs) So I think just like just the the nuts and bolts here. I think, yes, all Roth. I really want to try to move those old annuities into your current 403B. So you're going to have to work with someone on the ground who, ma- who what, what is the 403B plan? Is it another one of these crapo annuities? No, it's Fidelity. Oh my God. It's so good. So why don't we see if the folks at Fidelity can help you roll in the 2007, the 2008, and the 2018 retirement accounts. That would be ideal. That would be absolutely ideal. We're firing your family friend. I hope you don't have a barbecue coming up anytime soon. Once you do that, that'll just clean some things up. Okay. You can definitely do the 2007 and 2008. I don't know if they're going to be able to do the traditional. I bet they will. They'll figure out a way to do it. One other thing to do in case that they can't do that. If they say, oh, no, all of a sudden it's not labeled as a rollover and we cannot roll that into the 403B, is you can just roll it into a Fidelity IRA and get out of the annuity environment altogether because it's expensive and it's not worth it for you. So annuities are com- are complex, number one, and expensive, number two. I think you should definitely talk to someone on the ground at Fidelity to see if they can take that money in. First of all, it will consolidate stuff, which you, is happily something that's like works for you, but also it will save you money. There's no doubt. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not opposed to it because trust me, every time I get a statement and I see what they charge me in fees, it doesn't make me happy. And then that's so nice because we can just like pop it right into this plan or just say to Fidelity, if I can't, then let me roll over that, you know, everything into one IRA account at Fidelity. That's what I would do. Also, that's another idea. Ideally, the first thing that happens is all retirement plan assets get consolidated in your current 403B. I think that you're on a great track and a great trajectory. What I do think, Ed, is that you and your wife may not be able to just say, I'm done and never working again 10 years from now. You might be able to do something different. I mean, you're going to need some money. So you've got, uh, let's say, uh, let's call it $1.1 million. I'll take some of the, I, I'm look, taking some of your emergency reserve and putting it, but you know, of your assets, right? Of your $1.15 million, none of it's been taxed yet. As, as Ed Slot likes to say, you're a joint owner with the, with uncle Sam, and you can just knock off 20 or 25% of that, right? Cause yeah. you haven't paid the tax on it yet. Right. That means you have 800 grand now, right? And that will grow for 10 years. That's going to be great, but it's not going to be enough for you to just never work again. And you'll get be able to claim social security, but there is a period of time where you'll need health insurance. And if you want to have the freedom to run around and travel and do stuff, I don't think you'll have enough money to just do that. And so the more that you, the longer you can work, the better it will be. That's really where we are. So I think you're in a great shape. Is there any inheritance or anything? Does your young wife have very wealthy parents? No, I wish. How dare you? <laughs> you did, did you not get the memo? Okay. <laughs> I think like if you were just like 
normal Ed calling from Florida, the kind of person who is like, I'm taking this seriously and I'm going to work till I'm 67 years old. I feel much more confident that you're ready to rock and roll. But maybe what you just need to do is you work for 10 more years. You see how things go. You keep saving money. You use the Roth. You consolidate. Maybe things go better than expected. And maybe I'm wrong. But I want you guys to be thinking, okay, if it's 10 more years, we need a game plan to get us to like two different milestones. One is to claim Medicare. And if you don't have Medicare, it's an extra thousand bucks a month. Just pop that right onto your five to six grand a month. It's going to be six to seven in today's dollars, right? And so no Medicare, and but then also to get to Social Security. Once you get to Social Security, it should be okay, but it's not like you can just do whatever you want from your age 61 to age 70 because life's so good and you're so flush. It won't be like that. Because if you want to just do whatever you want to do, you're going to need a few more years of work. That makes sense. It it does? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm being buzzkill Jill. No, no. I mean, that's 60, 61, whatever is just my initial thought. But I I fully plan to be employed somehow, some way in into my 60s. Yes, for sure. All right. If that is the case, then I'm all about it. I I then then it's going to work great. But otherwise, I think you are in good shape. Let's clean this stuff up. I'm sorry about your next, your family friend. It's all going to be downhill at the next event, but it'll be all right. You know what? I, I do think that for a lot of people in education, I hear these stories all the time. So I don't want you to feel bad about it. It's just that the structure of a lot of the 403B plans, a lot of plans through hospitals and, and um, educational plans, they were all sold through variable annuities. So they were all insurance salespeople and people came out of those things and said, we're like, oh, I'll just roll it into my own annuity for myself. And you know what? It's not the best product for you. That's what I can say. I have one other question, if I could. Do it. Um, so because of the large amount we have in traditional does it make sense to slowly start uh, now that we both have the Roth options in our workplace plans to start converting some of that money over? You can't. You have no cash to pay for the conversion. Sorry, dude. Unless unless Fine. these plans, I'm, I'm thinking maybe they offer in some of these plans offer you know ways to do in plan conversions. Yeah, but you still have to pay the tax on it. Yeah, they're going to withhold the tax. So you still have to pay the tax, and then it's would, less money to him. Instead of worrying about that, I, I would just make. One hundred percent of your contributions Roth going forward yeah. for, the, okay. for the next decade plus. Okay. Yeah, and then and keep working. Okay. And if you're willing to keep working, then I feel better. Okay. Okay. All right, Ed from Florida, you're the best. Thank you so much for getting in touch with us, Mark. A lot of fun here. I want to. I'm moving to Florida to send my kids to college. Oh wait, I don't have kids, so that's why I have such a rosy outlook. I'm not worried about college. I'm only worried about your child, Mark, and I don't even have to fund that. So thank God. <sighs> Uh, if you've got a financial question, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button and we'll get your note. Don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter it comes out every single Friday and check out our service called Jill on Money Live. That's where you have access to quarterly live webinars and more bonus video content. Mark Talercio is our co-host, executive producer and king of all things web. We're distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen. And of course, put your hands metaphorically on someone's back or maybe just give someone a hug. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you on Thursday.